Michael Wilbon, a part of the interruption here on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Michael? Rich, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing better for talking to you. Uh, where'd you watch the uh, Big Ten championship game? How'd that go down for um, you? In the from from the uh, about the five yard line. <laughs> you were there. Five yard line in the end, of course. Of <laughs> course. Well, listen. We're not like you know the Michigan alums who think their team is going to these games every year. You think I'm going to miss the only time in history Northwestern has been short history? Northwestern's been to a Big Ten title game. Come on now. Mm-hmm. Man, I love your coach. I love him. I love Pat Fitzgerald and those guys that he recruits and the way that they play. I love it. I really do. I do too, Rich. And it's you know, look, we played. I don't know, probably a eight. Uh, on a one to ten level, especially when we were down twenty four twenty one, and I think it was uh, thirty one twenty four, and we had a chance. We had the ball down each time and a chance to tie or take the lead. And it, you know, we needed Ohio State to play at about a level of five, like we saw them. They were lower than that against Maryland, and, you know, uh, Purdue. We needed that, and we didn't get that. And you know, it was a competitive game, and I'm thrilled it was. But Ohio State's a better team now. And uh, But, yeah, you mentioned Pat Fitzgerald and those kids. I mean, lately, I mean, over the past four years, if you check the, the, the wins and losses, the only way I care to measure these things, I'm going to say we're probably fourth in the Big Ten behind the obvious three in whatever order. And I guess it's got to be Ohio State. Ohio State, Penn State, Michigan, or Michigan, Penn State. After that, I'm going to say it's, uh, it, it's us right there with Michigan State and Wisconsin. We've had, you know, we've had two 10-win seasons in the last three. So, yeah, no. So, I wasn't going to watch that from television. That's going to be that's going to be front and center. Okay, so you watched, you eyeballed personally the Ohio State. Do you think that the college football playoff committee got it right? You know, Rich, they got it fine. I'm not sure they got it right. I don't think there's a right and wrong. But I, they got it's just fine. I, I don't want to hear the whining from Georgia. You know, you're on equal footing. You play in the same conference as Alabama. You recruit the same kids as Alabama. You got a coach we know is a terrific coach who learned at the knee. One of the people he did was from the coach at Alabama and Kirby Smart. I don't want to hear from them blowing a two-touchdown lead in the fourth quarter that somehow everybody got it wrong if they put in Oklahoma or Ohio State. Don't want to hear it. Georgia's had its chances. I mean, just, you know what, they could be penalized and, and, and passed over for the, for the fake punt alone. You know, you make those decisions and you lose that game after having a lead on a neutral site. I don't want to hear it. So, so Oklahoma in the title game is in the in the final four is fine for me. Uh, Ohio State would have been fine. Georgia would have been fine. Any of those three teams, I, you can you can split hairs if you want. But I'm I don't want to hear from Georgia that somehow they were wronged because they weren't. I was saying that the Jalen Hurts comeback, if you will, story. The only thing comparing I could compare it to is Drew Bledsoe coming back for the injured Tom Brady to win the 2001 AFC Championship game and put the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Uh, that's the only thing I could compare it to. What What is your take on on Hurts and and that story in Alabama that unfolded in the SEC Championship game, Michael? You know, Rich, that's a great pull to, to think of that. I did not think of that. Um, but I, I think the Hurts story is even more... I don't know. I don't, I don't want to get carried away here and say inspirational, but it, it's certainly a cautionary tale. It's a wonderful story in that Jalen Hurts is a kid. I mean, he's not paid to play football like Brady and Bledsoe. I mean, this is a kid who stayed there, who could have transferred out, who had to trust a lot of people, including a coaching staff. And, you know, you don't always have to trust a coaching staff. We know plenty of tales of kids transferring because they didn't trust the coaching staff. So it's probably, and this is very cliche, a credit to everybody involved the coaching staff at Alabama, um, his parents, um, the teammates, friends, but most of all, Jalen Hurts, who has never done anything but uttered the right thing when asked about this. And it's, it must have been terribly difficult at times to be 26-2 and two and told you're being replaced um, and to, to get this chance. And I don't know what happens from here. It, it doesn't much matter to me as much that Jalen Hurts has cemented his place in these great sports stories it's just, uh, you know what, it's just basic. Just a, 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 He must be a hell of a kid to be able to do this and pull this off and then not just getting the chance but taking advantage of it and playing as well as he did, even in the area in which it was thought he had a shortcoming, the passing game. He didn't look like he had any shortcomings on Saturday night when I was watching, mm -hmm. so good for him, man. I, I think it's pretty incomparable. So who do you vote for Heisman right now, Michael? Wow.
I, I you know, Tua, Tua was great for a longer stretch. And three weeks ago, I thought it was going to be like, you know, Steph Curry in that unanimous MVP award. It's not going to be that now. You know, I have a, I have a 10 year old who all he does is watch college football. He just falling in love with college football. He just consumes it like a madman. Like he was somebody's scout. And he turned to me. He's been saying Kyler Murray for two weeks. And as soon as Kyler Murray finished off, you know, his game the other night against Texas, my son, the smart aleck turns to me, we're sitting in a box in Indianapolis. He turns to me and says, dad, I told you Kyler Murray. <laughs> and for the first time, I couldn't just say, shut up. You're wrong. I didn't, I didn't have that ace up my sleeve. Um, I used to vote rich. I voted for 20 years. I don't vote anymore, but if I had a ballot, I think I would go to a, but I would, this is one of those ones where I would have called scouts and coaches, assistant people I know who, who make a living in college football. I would have called them and relied heavily on what they thought. Cause I no longer can make up my mind that clearly. Yeah. What and about it, you, by the way? Well, do you, you know, have a vote I, now? I, I do. I've never had a vote and I would, I'd, I'd take one if, if offered, but, um, you know what? The way, uh, and again, I might be biased because you, you, you covet what you see. <laughs> That kid, Dwayne Haskins, man. <laughs> Tua didn't even play. Tua didn't play because you could sit here and say, well, Ohio State was up and down. Um, but uh, Tua hardly played a fourth quarter. And I know what Kyler Murray's done, but Haskins right in front of you that night, what he did against Michigan, what he's been doing against, you know, Maryland when the defense couldn't stop anybody. Uh, and, that, and, that, and that's a pressure game for him because that's his, that's his hometown. I mean, that was the team that he – uh, you know, initially everybody thought was going to go play for. I mean, his last three weeks have been incredible. He's closed out big time, Michael. It, it, it's, you know, it's, you know, and Haskins came on. You're right. He's been on the rail. He came late. Um, I, I, you know, I watched the Big Ten. If I'm not watching anything else, I'm watching my conference. And I, I just thought, okay, well, he's, you know, he's third. I mean, there's no way. But you know what? The other night um, it sort of went quietly. He threw for 499 yards. <laughs> and Ohio State needed to keep scoring because we had scored enough. I, I mean, I, we needed to score in the 30s. And we couldn't because Haskins stayed on the field and dominated the ball. And their, their, clock, their clock dominance and ball possession was as a result, Rich, of their passing game. I mean, he did with the passing game what, you know, veteran, you know, old school coaches seek to do with a running game. And you're right. He's, I mean, I've I gotten to see, you know, too much of an eyeful of him. But I, I still... I think I would vote to a um, Murray and Haskins. I think I would, but again, if I was doing this, you know, college football for a living, like I did for a long time, sure. I mean, I would sit and I would be open to convincing to persuasion because those three kids have been absolutely fabulous. And the one thing Tua has done is he's done it all season and he's done it where they're beating people by margins that, that teams just don't win by consistently anymore. Michael Wilbon, a part of the interruption. A few more minutes left with him. Uh, okay, a couple Chicago questions, Michael. First one, football. All right, here we go. Lions lose to the Rams at home. The Packers lose to the Cardinals at home, and Mike McCarthy fired. The Vikings, with their $84 million man, go into New England, and they, weren't, they, they were in the game, but they couldn't pull it off. And the Bears, with their backup quarterback, come back from 10 down there and almost pulled it off. And so far in front of this division, how does it feel to not only be set up in the short term, but with the way this team looks like it's built long term atop that division as a Bears Rich, person, Rich, Michael? it came out of nowhere. And, and, you know, for a while, I mean, I was certainly critical of the, new, of the relatively new GM Ryan Pace. I guess it's like four years now. Because there were draft picks, like taking the kid from the wide receiver from, from West Virginia who he can't even get on the field, just been a bust. Um, and they traded a lot to get Trubisky when he was really unknown. But it is all it – is, it is, he has proven to be right, Ryan Pace, and people critics like me have proven to be wrong so far. But you know what, Rich, they give up – the Bears gave away a game yesterday. I mean, for people who just sort of pay attention to that game late when they come back, they shouldn't have been behind like that. Um, and you don't want to, I don't want to be critical of a backup quarterback who wins in Detroit on Thanksgiving Day, which is what Chase Daniel did a week ago. But, you know, he came out in his Jay Cutler costume and threw a pick six to start the game. And they were just behind. And, and you mentioned those other teams losing. The Bears were the team yesterday that stood to just really put it on lock. 
you know, if they had won that game, I'm not talking about coming back to win it. They were leading 14-7, and they were in control of the game and made some mistakes, and one of them belongs to the head coach for calling the timeout and allowing the Giants to develop some momentum out of nowhere at halftime, which he, 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 took, he took responsibility for that yesterday postgame, and I was glad to see that. But, you know, look, they are so much better than we thought. And the trade for Khalil Mack, going back to crediting Ryan Pace, the trade for Mack, it, you talk about people making their teammates better, there's tangible evidence of that. You, you look at the way they played with him in the first few games. He was hurt and missed, too. And then they played that way without him. They were, like, just infused with the spirit of Mack. And it can't be exaggerated what he's meant to that team. And I'm not saying Aaron Donald is not as valuable defensively. There are other players who are. But what the Bears have done with Mack since that trade has been great. But they – let's I don't want to go crazy on this. You know any given Sunday. So, the next two weeks, the Bears need to win one of these next two games because they've got the Rams at home on Sunday night in a game that has been flexed to prime time. They've got Green Bay at home the next week. They need to win one of those two because their last game, Rich, if they have to have it, if they have to go into the finale, season finale to win, is at Minnesota. That's not a preferable circumstance. So the, the other game that I hadn't mentioned is at San Francisco. So they got time. They need to win this before they have to go to Minnesota and win it. You don't want to have to do that. So, but the Bears have been, you know, perhaps the surprise of the season in, in, in many ways. And, I'm look, I'm thrilled. Um, but I, I don't want to start counting chickens just yet. They, that game yesterday, which everybody says, oh, it was a thrilling comeback. It was also a missed opportunity. They gave away a game in Miami. They gave away a 20 nothing lead to the Packers week one. They got to stop that if they're going to cash in on this ultimately, short term or long term. And last one for you, Michael. Um, three and a half years after being plucked from the campus of Iowa State, uh, the mayor, Fred Hoiberg, bounced after a record of 115 and 155. Your thoughts on the firing in the state of the Bulls in Chicago? Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised by this because I don't get the point. So the Bulls have had three of their top five players injured basically until a game ago. Um, you know, Laurie Markkinen's been injured. Bobby Portis has been injured. Chris Dunn, the starting point guard, has been injured. That's three of their top five, six players. I'd say three of their top five. Those guys have been out. So what's Hoiberg supposed to do? And I, and I will, let me say, I just applaud the Reinsworth family. And Jerry and Michael are not trying to have the process. They're not trying to tank and go into the lottery every year and then sort of raise their hands and triumph and say, look what we did. They, they, they're trying to win. And so I get that. But when you look at the college pool of talent, there's one guy, maybe two that can change it. One guy's Zion Williamson you know can change it. The Bears are a game out, I think, of the worst record in the NBA. I think they're five wins and somebody, a couple people have four. Atlanta may have four. I don't understand what firing Hoiberg at this point does. Um, I, and I don't think there's off-the-court stuff. I mean, Fred is what you see is what you get. Uh, just seems like a terrific guy. And I could see replacing him in two years if you didn't think that, you know, you got your whole personnel roster established and you want to really go after a playoff spot. But I, I got I to gotta do some delving into this because, to me, it just seems like why are you doing this? I, you can't just look at the record. You're looking at working with young players, an incredibly young roster. You want to get them better, playing well after the break. And they, you can't win in the NBA when you're missing three of your top five. Ask the Golden State Warriors, who've been missing two All-Stars, and they've lost eight of 13. So I, I don't know. I'm a little dubious on this. Um, I applaud the Bulls for not wanting to engage in what I consider largely a phony thing, the process when you can just draft after draft after draft for six years, well, damn, you better get it right at some point, you know, it's while patting yourselves on the back. But uh, a little bit for Fred, and I don't, you know, I don't exactly know why it timed out the way it did. Not uh, yet. Mike, you're the best, man. Say hi to Mr. Tony for me, okay? Will do, Rich. Thanks for having me, man. You Good bet. Your voice. Is it possible? Is it possible to get you and Tony to do a Tiger versus Phil sort of golf pay per view? I'd, 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 I'd pay to see that, Michael. I think people would only pay to see that if we started fighting in the middle of the round. That's what we're looking we, for. Yeah, we're mic'd which up. Which we won't do. Mike, yeah, that's be great. Take care, Michael. Thanks for the call. I, 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 Always thanks, love it. Rich. Always Appreciate love it. You, you bet. At Mike Rilbon on Twitter. The Rich Eisen Show weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.